It's episode 16 of the All Things Techie podcast and this episode I'm joined by Ben Taylor. Hope you enjoy. The All Things Techie podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E media.ie. Thanks a million for joining us on another episode of the All Things Techie podcast. And we have been doing a series, which is how people have got into the world of audiovisual. And we, like we even said to Mark, I think Mark Coxon's story is the best one that he used to, he studied professionally. Um, yeah. So can, can you beat that? How did you get uh, into the world of audiovisual? I, I, I'm probably a fairly quite a common path into EV in that um, a somewhat rudderless, directionless ship. Um, <laughs> to, going back to school, so so this this year is my 20th anniversary working in EV. Um, wow, congratulations. So that's, that's literally half my life. You've um, seen it all then? It, it... Um, I've, I've seen a fair chunk. Uh, so when I was at school, I, was, I wasn't a daft laddie, but I wasn't perhaps as... Uh, as good at applying myself as I should have been. Um, I, I, did learn to play I did learn to play electric guitar um, in, in lieu of homework and that kind of thing. But um, yeah. so, so I stayed to school to sixth year and then um, left school, bummed around for about two, three months. Um, Mum and dad kind of came back from holiday saying, oh, we've met the recruitment manager for a large DIY chain. Um, <laughs> so go down there and get yourself a job. So I did. And I worked for, for B&Q for a couple of years until I was 19. Um, I'd always been into playing in bands and that kind of thing and, you know, doing some very, very basic uh, mixing and, you know, playing the lights and stuff like that through school. Um, so you kind of think, oh, yeah, yeah, I must, this is this is really cool. Um, and then my dad, let me see, I was 19. My dad was uh, on the property committee for his church and there was he was overseeing getting a new PA system installed. Um, so a, a local Edinburgh company called Northern Light, which a fair few folk I've heard of, I'm sure, because uh, they were quite a, quite a big company in their day. Um, one of their project engineers was leading that one. So my dad asked them, do you have any jobs going for a guy who's wasting his life working for B&Q? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a name to write away to. I uh, wrote off and didn't hear back for about six months. And eventually the, they were at a point of where they were recruiting technicians. Um, so I went down for an interview and a little soldering test and, and then that was me. So that was around about, uh, I think, April or May time, 99. Wow. Okay. Um, and so that was me for the s- best part of six years at Northern Light. Um, so started off as a install tech, basically learning on the job. Um, so I spent many a, many a long day and night in a dusty building site, soldering cables and... Uh, well, you know, Joe Way uh, actually has had some comments where, you know, when you get the intern into the job, words, was any pranks played on you during your internship? Oh, uh, whether I was gone, I'd sent for a long stand or anything like that, or tartan paint or... Or, <laughs> or even, even sorting out the cables in Len. <laughs> I don't recall, but I'm sure there were something, um, you know, typ- typical on-site shenanigans with, you know, a bunch of electricians and... Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I won't name who, who was involved, but a colleague of mine, okay, as you know, I will name him, he's the co-host, uh, <laughs> and uh, who can't join us today, but uh, Simon, Simon and myself, I remember when we were working on the job site, and, uh, we were soldering away at something, and then one looks at the other and is like, did you inform health and safety of that, in case we set off the fire alarms? And we literally looked at each other and started blowing on the, the soldering gun with all the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Hot works permits and all that, yeah. I've, yeah. Well, I, I don't think I've, in the six years or so I was doing install stuff, I don't think I ever set a fire alarm off to my to my knowledge or to my memory, but I'm not saying it can't have happened, but uh, not, that, yeah. not that I remember. But um, hey, so, so Northern Light was quite a good company in, in that there was a lot of millennium money floating about back then so some pretty big projects um so it was it was a good company to work for and that you were kind of exposed to all the various different disciplines within you know not just av but you know professional lighting sound rigging automation you know hoist controls mm-hmm. you name it um so it was a good kind of learning ground um yeah and then 2005 rolled around and 
being away from home a lot was you know kind of take not taking its toll on a relationship as such but you know i think some people it comes easy and other people you have to really work at things when you're away for three weeks and then home for a weekend and then away for three weeks again and all that yeah. um so i got myself a job locally at the royal college of surgeons of edinburgh um as their first ever ev ev technician was the job title um, so you were in house now at this time. i was in house yeah um so that was uh, that was an awakening as well um they they were in 2005 they were 500 that was their 500th anniversary their quincentenary year so they'd done a lot of investment into facilities and stuff um and then thought they should really have someone that has a, a half an idea of what they were doing with the place to to look after it and for some reason chose me so. <laughs> yeah and, and how many years did you did you stay with the rcsi uh, uh rcs ed i i was there for 12 and a half years uh so it was a fair stint um yeah, originally part of the the property and facilities department, and then after about two two and a half years, I think I rallied to get moved into IT because it was you know even back then I could see that the two were getting further and further converging and you know inextricably linked. Um, yeah, and that was that was a good a good place to work. Um, as time went on, it became more and more commercial. The the events that we we did, you know, when I when I first started the 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 events calendar was was outlook um and then when i when i left we had a a, a 77 bedroom hotel that was being expanded to almost double in size um 20 or 20 or different meeting spaces and loads and loads of commercial business you know um, all manner of different things as well as the internal sort of surgical meetings and um, skills labs and all that kind of stuff to look after i remember i mean sat through so many different conferences and stuff you know on various i mean a lot of it was medical even the commercial stuff was a lot of uh, like pharmaceutical companies or you know um annual meetings for different uh surgical specialties and stuff like that so i, I wish i'd kept kept how many C cpd points i would have earned over those 12 and a half years because yeah <laughs> i'd have probably been qualified in something yeah, yeah. you know like th like this is it like uh, you, you start learning all the medical acronyms and then you, you know you you're in a pub or having a coffee with with a mate and go, I know, actually actually know this. I'm not a doctor, but I actually know that. The literally happened to me yesterday. Um, <laughs> going out for a coffee with my wife and a, a friend of ours who also works at the college, and uh, she was just talking about her mum's got. Um, oh, I forget what it is now. Uh, oh, COPD. And I was okay. like, that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, isn't it? Because <laughs> I'm sure I've seen it on a PowerPoint slide at some point, several times. Yeah, yeah. And and, and your wife was just looking at you going, how yeah. do you actually know this? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why, do well, you know? why do you know this? So moving on from the RCS, where, where so, did you end up next? So, um, yeah, so November 2017, um, I moved to be the AV and Learning Spaces Manager at Edinburgh Napier University, which is where I currently am. Yes, so that's that's a bit a bit of a jump into well, you were in sort of education and of things, but you're going into more depth of higher education. Yeah, yeah. So obviously the, the college was very kind of specialist postgraduate stuff. Um I'd been a, been a member of LTSMG for a number of years. Um I think the Edinburgh conference was the first one I went to and I've been to most since then for the for quite a few years. So I'd always kind of seen it seen the university perspective um at that type of that type of thing and you know got to know some some good pals through that um so yeah i'd always i'd always seen moving to a university as kind of one of my i, I guess uh, aspirations mm -hmm. um having never actually you'll notice i've never actually been a student left school started working um so my move to napier was uh, an eye opener a big a more of an eye opener than i'd even anticipated because just the, everything that goes along with being a student throughout the whole student year um I had to learn that as well as you know the the team and the, the the you know the intricacies of the role and how things have been and how things you know organization reviews and everything how things have changed and moved apart and come back together again and mm -hmm. i've been i've been quite lucky in that i have managed to get a reasonable bit of investment for refreshing classrooms and stuff like that and lecture theaters it's desperately needing done i guess that's the reason that i've been brought into napier is because they they knew that they they hadn't invested for a number of years and, and they needed to do that. And and, and come up to speed. Um, now, are you working with, as part of a team or are you leading up a team? I'm leading a team. So I've got um, I've got a team in nine. 
Um, we've got three campuses, three main campuses in Edinburgh. Um, so I've got an equal split, three on each campus. Um, but we're uh, we're the oper operational side, the customers facing side for a lot of the services within information services. So, you know, we're not just an AV team. We're not a dedicated AV team. We're, um, you know, we have the AV responsibility for classrooms and uh, lecture theatres and social spaces, digital signage, that kind of thing, the traditional AV side of things. But we're also um, desktop PC technicians um, setting up IP phones across the entire university. So staff offices, you know, you name it. Um, so it's a very busy, very busy team. Um, I, I have to, now that you've brought it up with all your IT end of things and, and the actual college, we, I have to ask some college questions at this stage or university questions. Are you a Microsoft or Google campus? We are a Microsoft campus, yeah. We're Office 365, so okay. um, currently still Skype for business, but Teams is gradually starting to, to roll out depending on who you are. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're quite... How are you finding Teams now? Because like in UCD, we have both... Google and Microsoft. Now, personally, I just love like our all our emails are on Google, but uh, I am, like I use the Office three six five for Word and PowerPoint and whatnot. Yeah. But as for someone wanting to, a lecturer wanting to do a simple meeting, I just say Hangouts all the way yeah. is because it's it's a URL, a click, it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we're we're, we're current, start, Skype for Business is, is is still our current um, promoted service for that. Um, we are we will be moving to Teams, and as I said, depending on who you are, some people have access to it. I I, I don't have much experience of playing with Teams yet, um, yeah. bits and pieces. But uh, Skype for Business, I find you know, it's it it does what it needs to do. I know we're we're using Zoom just now, and I would prefer to have access to Zoom to be honest, but. <laughs> You get tutors that have three or four different Skype accounts, and then you just realize that they're trying to contact someone with Skype for business or yeah. and it just doesn't work. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my life. Yes, very familiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So have you any interesting projects going on in, in Edinburgh during the summer? Um, no, nothing nothing groundbreaking, nothing particularly interesting. Um really just uh so in, in the last last few months, uh, we we're, we were too late to the party. Well, we weren't too late to the party, but we were. We talked about the pace of things happening. Um, finance <laughs> didn't really didn't really help with that last year. So that we we kind of got to the end of summer and then got the a, a chunk of money to spend on um, classroom and lecture theatre refurbishments. So mm -hmm. trying to do that through um, trimester one and two was interesting. Um, we got five big lecture theatres done between sort of November and into January, um, and then 15 classrooms done sort of early January into February. Um, that's basically, we've got a really good integrator that we work with a lot um, up in Scotland, and they are happy to do like an overnight classroom install. So we hand it over to them as soon as we can in the afternoon, but sometimes five o'clock when, when classes finish, and then they'll turn that around ready for teaching the following morning super so yeah. it's it, it was it was challenging to start with when we were first the first round of classrooms we did um that was when we were kind of learning exactly what had had to be done and, and initially their appreciation of ready to teach was not quite aligned with <laughs> my anticipate my uh, interpretation of ready to teach yeah the, oh, so, so the screen comes on and the computer comes on okay it's ready is it? yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah the computer was still bolted into the previous teaching desk not in the new one in the okay. yeah. And so yeah it was it was problematic and i'd, I'd had to, i was off sick unfortunately in january i had the lurgy that went around everybody um, back then, so right at right at the time when I kind of needed to be there, I was in my bed at home for the best part of a week, which was horrendous. Right. Um, so as as we did the, the five classrooms at the first campus, then we did a second and the third campus, five classrooms on each. By the time they were doing the third campus, it was a very well oiled machine, and it, and it was straight in there, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, and then I think the guys were done by four o'clock in the morning or thereabouts, and then they were away. And it was and it was all good to go because you're very much standardized. So once you've done one, you just yeah. rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. uh, when when I started, 
on a single campus, I think I counted five different control system vendors you know, yeah. with Crestron, Kramer, Extron, AMX, Procon, <laughs> SY, I think was in there somewhere as well. So, you know. So now being able to control Edinburgh, um, what, yeah. what, what system have you put in? Are so you... I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Extron guy, um, unashamedly. I, when I was at the College of Surgeons, we, we had AMX initially. Um, that it, it was okay. It fell over every now and then, and lithium batteries had to be replaced because they swelled up and all the rest of it. Right. Um, and the the frustrating thing was, is you know, the traditional programmer having to get someone in and pay them a whole heap of money to make a small change on an on an AMX. Uh, this is why I keep on saying, on a university level, this is why people go down the extra route. Yeah. They do not want to pay the the programmer to come in and. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I I went on the AMX Programmer 1 and Programmer 2 courses uh, way back when. Um, and and the, the idea being that I could take a an existing configuration program and make some changes if I ever wanted to. But, you know, the reality was I'm not a programmer. No, no. I, I, programmer 1 was okay. I managed to get through that and everything. Programmer 2 was a bit more challenging. Um, but then I just wasn't doing it frequently enough to to really get my head into it and, and you know, maintain currency essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so after a while, and the AMX stuff was getting a bit flaky, and it shouldn't have been. Um, I took a decision just to say, right, you know, Extron had brought the TouchLink stuff out, and you could configure it rather than program it. And I was like, no, nah, that's that's definitely the direction to move. So, yeah. so I did that over over the period of probably three or four years. Got rid of all the AMX and moved it all over to Extron stuff and. And the, I've heard that Crestron are going to go down that route a bit more. The and. Have a layer where you don't need the programming knowledge to mm-hmm. to, to go into, you know. And um, now you, you mentioned earlier, and I'm just going to go back to it. You said, "Oh, well, I, I didn't do any further education or whatever." But you do have your CTS. Yes, yeah. So I did my CTS. So that's something I looked at CTS for quite a number of years because um, I was always conscious. I guess you know, personally, without having, you know, I've got a couple of hires, that's that's as educated as I am officially, you know, without having gone to college or gone to uni, I was always kind of looking out for, you know, professional certifications and stuff like that. Um, and I, I remember looking at CTS um, with one of my colleagues at the college probably six years ago and went through the test paper and everything and went, really? Uh, it's, you know, the, the, initial, the initial thing was I was very, very Americanized. Um, so the terminology was different. That. Same being said before. You. In fact, I've said it several times. <laughs> Top of lie. Yes, it is. So, yeah. yeah. So and and you know, looking at the obviously it's multiple choice, and so looking at the answers, and I was like, that's really kind of ambiguous, and you know, it could be that, and it could be that, and obviously now I know that that's intentional. <laughs> um, so I never I never really progressed with it, and then when I started at Napier, um, obviously we're members of SCOMS. I was never a member of SCOMS before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's the opportunity to do CTS uh, as a one-stop shop down at Loughborough University. Yes. Um, with a, a subsidised rate of £500, I think it was, or something. Um, so we jumped at the chance for that, not a problem. Um, and went through the class. That was Chuck Espinosa that was uh, teaching that class. You know, so a really good experience, <laughs> you know, exceptional. Um, and a good laugh, you know. A lot of other folk that I kind of know from... Um, the SCOMS conference and from, from LTSMG in years gone by. So it's you know, it a bad bunch of mates, basically, um, and good fun. So, yeah, I did, did the course. We were supposed to sit the exam at the end of the, th- I think it was three days. Um, but unfortunately, the authentication server from Pearson View was lost with a, um, a query yeah, somewhere. Yeah, um, well, yeah, Despite their best efforts, it wasn't able to, they weren't able to sort that out. So I had to fly back down to Loughborough the following week on the Friday to literally sit a TCS exam and then fly home again. So You only received your CTS only recently then, if that's the case. The yeah, so I did it, uh, was it June, June last year, I think it was. A really, really good course. It was, it was more for me just kind of formalizing a lot of knowledge that I had anyway. Um, so when I went in for the exam, you know, back the following week, obviously it's an exam, you're a wee bit nervous and everything, but actually I found it much easier than I expected and I kind of breezed through it and got quite a high pass mark. So a super happy yeah. day. I was like, you know, 45 minutes, I think I was in there and then I was back out again. So how do you find the AV mats in the CTS? Um, 
can I remember it? <laughs> no, I, no. I mean, it, it's. I don't think it was. It was too bad. You know, maths was never one of my strong points. But um, you know, looking at it logically and you know remembering your you know different you know, ten log and twenty log for different power equations and stuff like that, and you know the inverse square laws and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, that that's all stuff that you're as an ev person that's been in the industry for a while it's kind of stuff you're yeah, familiar with yeah, for the most yeah, part yeah. It's, and yeah. as i say it's just you know putting the the specifics to to what you think you know i guess now would you now being in, a manager in, in charge of the university now would you try and push your team towards getting CTS? Abs absolutely yeah yeah that's definitely something that um i've been considering and, and I'm thinking about um, there's a couple of my team have actually had the, the opportunity and have done CTS before um, must be about four years ago because it had lapsed and they had very or no renewal units to speak for to actually uh, look at my certification um, so that's, I think that's it's so important I, that like once you have it do not let it lapse well that's, that's it I mean that's it's one of the things I'm, I'm you know look my team members that have done that you know getting them to recertify and then you know when when you look at it you need 30 RUs over a three-year period so 10 a year that yeah. is really easy to achieve well even even when you say a webinar like with them yeah. it makes a, a couple probably, of RUs. yeah at least one year or you per per webinar you can you can easily wrap them up now you, you mentioned scams and you mentioned that you've been with LTSMG for years and years and yeah. I, I can't show favoritism to SCOMs or LTS. And I, I, I try not to, you know, even though I've, I've been on panel discussions with LTSMG and I like the guys. But do you find a difference between SCOMs and the LTSMG? I, I, yeah, I think there's an inevitably a difference. Um, I've only been to the one SCOMs conference, the one in York. I wasn't able to go to Bournemouth this year, unfortunately, because I'd already had got holidays booked and it clashed with that. So um, I guess ov overall you'd... F I would say SCOMS is a little bit more kind of strategic. It's maybe slightly broader um, in the, you know, sort of different learning technologies and stuff. Give me a day in the life then of your job then in Edinburgh. Like, would it be more IT related? Um, um, it's, 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 it's a mixture of stuff. Obviously, as a, as a manager for Nine, there's a fair amount of the, the HR side of things. Um, you know, just holiday requests and trying to coordinate things in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to be the, the AV design focused quite a lot. Um, there's not really that kind of in-depth AV experience to within the, within the rest of the team um, to, to you know to to really kind of uh, lead that AV design side of things, which are, I guess is why you have five different control vendors <laughs> in a single campus. Um, so yeah, a fair a fair chunk of my time is spent because there's there's always another. A uh, little project or a big project that's coming up. Um, we're, we're information services have been quite quite good and kind of broadened the outreach and, and kind of offered our services for, uh, certainly within the AV design side of things. So that if a, if one of the schools has got a certain project coming up, um, we're very they're very much encouraged to come and speak to us and, and bring me in um, to sort of have that conversation around the AV design and stuff. And I guess. You know, we've, we've had our school of computing did a um, cyber academy had a, an install, a nice little um, two by three video wall with Extron matrix switching and stuff like that as a kind of a cyber security situation room, which is pretty cool. And nice. um, they did a games lab and stuff, which I was involved with. Recently, I've had um, we've got a creative informatics space, which is um, sort of in, in progress and lots of little small installs for the senior leadership team, university leadership team offices and stuff so that they've got good quality screens and cameras and stuff like that so they can jump on Skype calls um, mm. in, a, in a small group within their own offices and stuff like that. So lots of, lots of bits and pieces like that. Um, I guess planning for, planning for summer, you know, we've, we've had obviously clearing and stuff with, you know, the, the annual re-imaging. We've got the final push to try and get rid of windows 7 and move everything onto windows 10 which is going to be challenging over the next few months to get that done by the end of the year essentially yeah that, 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 well luckily enough we have loaner laptops that i look after that i just decided look you know 
if this Windows 7 and I can't upgrade it because of the processor, we're getting a new laptop. So I was yeah. able to, yeah. to, to push that in of, of things too. Yeah, well, we, the university centralized purchasing of IT equipment um, into, into information services from procurement at um, the mm -hmm. uh, start of the year. Uh, so we've now got, we now have a budget for the university for all staff machines. Um, now you mentioned there that you you like the design aspect. Would you ever see yourself going down the CTSD route? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. um, I de I definitely fancy doing that at some point when I've got time to breathe and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's it's something I when I came away from CTS, um, that was one of one of my first considerations as well. Actually, I found that kind of a lot easier than I thought it would be, you know, and I, you know, sat through the, obviously the, the training class and, you know, Chuck makes it as engaging as absolutely possible. Um, mm -hmm. And so you really take things in, but then after the exam, I kind of thought, so what's next then? You know, that, that, that was not too difficult. So, you know, CTSD is a total different step above, I think, but. Yeah, no, I've, I've been told out of the three that CTSD is the hardest. Now I've got the three books and then I look, oh, open up CTSI and say, oh wait, Okay, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll go for the I before the D. <laughs> well, I think the, 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 the D would certainly be a bit more appropriate for, for what I do, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm not on the tools anymore. I, I try and keep my hand in with the soldering iron and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But as I say, we've got a good relationship with a, a particular integrator that we use for the vast majority of all of our work. So um, rely on them. And it's, you know, like any integrator, you need to keep your eye on them and, you know, make sure they're doing what they should be doing. And um, I guess the CTSI would you know, possibly be useful in, in, in that part, but I think CTSD would be um, definitely the, the next step. So Now, you mentioned earlier on about your son's fifth birthday and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. uh, now, I've, I've told these quick fire questions before to other guests on the show. Um, Father's Day, what would would you want a tech toy, and what would it be if unlimited budget? Unlimited budget, oh crikey, uh, a tech toy, a pretty awesome drone. I like a drone. Yeah, uh, have I've, you any at the moment? I've got a few. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I I have previously held my commercial permissions um, from the CEA. Well, wow. um, that was something that I. I when I was working at the college, you know, it was a job I'd been in for a long time and I knew the place inside out. I knew the job inside out. You know, you know what floorboard creaks and you know which side of a door you can get a fit cable under and stuff, you know, intimate knowledge of the place. Um, so I had the brain space to to do something a bit of something a wee bit different. So um, I, I thought, you know, obviously drones are the next big thing. This was probably three years ago or so, started thinking about this. Um, so yeah, yeah, I invested a bit of money and bought some drones and did my all the training stuff and you know the practical tests and all the rest of it and got my permissions and then kind of did nothing with it. <laughs> so um, you have you have the drones that are sort of sitting in the corner. Yeah, I did. I, I did one commercial job, um, having spent all the money. Um, but I, I think that my my justification for that was right at the point where I dashed my permissions had come through. I think literally the month after that was when I got. Uh, asked if I'd like to apply for the job at Edinburgh Napier Aye. um and you know decided to follow that up it was a good opportunity I'd, I'd always as I said earlier I'd always fancied doing the the university thing um so here, here was a chance here's an opportunity so the drone stuff just went to the side <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have the brain space to to you know really dive into the new job and continue th trying to find clients and do you know stuff outside of outside of a full-time job you know so so the, so the drones are your personal toy at the moment yeah yeah um, and, and but, do you think the might flying with your son or anything like that i have done but i haven't done i i've not done that for a good while now so um i should probably sell a couple to be honest um but and the, you know the technology and that side of things has come on a hell of a lot since i've been playing with them so i think uh, the latest and greatest drone would be a pretty cool toy to have. Now, have I, I think we've established that you are a tech geek. Um, you, you mentioned earlier about your son wanting a tablet for <laughs> birthday. Um, well, is this a good or bad thing as a parent? Uh, it says, 
the guy that has a two-year-old and trying to keep him away from the TV, you know, yeah. and then I spent the past hour watching Fireman Sam on a 58-inch screen. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life now. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, he didn't actually ask for one, to be honest. Okay. Um, he's... You, know, you wanted your 58 inch screen back. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got a 42 inch. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, to, to be honest, the, the tech side of things at home is not that prevalent for me. I guess, uh, you know, I do it day in, day out at work. So when I come home, I don't particularly want to mess about with, with tech all the time. I mean, okay, so it's just me then. <laughs> I need no, to. I need to you, but, you know, my, my, my TV is an LG that I bought about eight years ago. Uh, right. You know. 1080p does does the job for me and you know I've, I've got a playstation 3 that i use iplayer and netflix on and stuff like that and then we've got a couple of fire tv sticks so um so that, not, do you know what it's, it's sad ben that we get to an age where we go i love to get a ps4 but i just know, know that i do not have time to play this PS4. exactly you know i used to I used to enjoy a I was never a massive gamer, but you know, I used to, you know, Gran Turismo. I like my, my motorsports and stuff. Gran Turismo so. or FIFA so, or something. Yeah, you know. Gran Turismo from one up to six, well into it, and then I've not, I've not even pl played a game on that damn thing for well over a year, I would say. Um, yeah. You've answered the question about Extron versus Crestron, on which you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to throw the next one at you: is AV mishaps because you have been in the role for twenty plus years now. You have to name one mishap that you, you have to say oh, it made you sweat. Oh yeah, I mean, the, I, did, I remember I was working in Kuwait once at Kuwait University, and <laughs> it was it was a I was with Northern Light at the time. Um, the client was in the room. I was in the control room of a big auditorium, and I was in the back of a, a, a half rack um, with a big. Panasonic AG7350 VHS, SVHS player and it had a straight IEC a mains cable coming out of it and they couldn't get the back of the rack on so I had to change it for a right angled one so I pulled it out the back of the kit I can see where this is going yes, yes, <laughs> that is still live <laughs> my brain did not compute that chomp with the pliers and I still have the pliers with a big um, hole in them um, that made a big bang and uh, Quite terribly impressed. So yeah, there's been mishaps. Uh, I'm trying to think on the on the commercial side of things. So I've always managed to get away with things by the skin of my teeth, by and large. Um, yeah. Somehow, I've been quite lucky. I don't remember. There must have been stuff. I've I've had you know. Put in a, what, what's the common call from the faculty then? Oof. <laughs> Well, I've, I've, I mean, there's there's so many so many things you know where things just don't work when they should you know newest uh, laser projectors that go into some sort of sleep mode and shut down their HDB's T port so you can't switch them back on because you're using it for control as well mm -hmm. and uh, th and they need a firmware update just to resolve that but they don't want to give us the firmware update which is really handy um, I'm not has, has most of your camp has gone AV over IT or IT or um, no not not yet I mean we're um, we will be installing GVE um, from Extron sometime fairly soon um, we've got about 70 or so Kramer Vias um, of different flavors. Um, we've got the VSM server for that. We've I've started putting in uh, Extron streaming media processors into the big theaters um, purely because un unusually for universities, we are purely single projection in the vast majority of our spaces. We don't really have any kind of matrix um, side by side projection. Okay. Um, so when we're using it for overflow, um, being able to composite the two, two inputs basically for camera and content mm -hmm. and stick that as a single web feed to show and show on a single projector in, a, in an overflow space um, was the thinking behind that. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not really doing anything AV over IP yet. Um, you properly think, but think i think we will in the, we will in the future i'm sure yeah, yeah. no it's 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 an area where people go wow we have to catch up and then you just go uh, i i hear that very problematic in in different places yeah i think it, if you're doing a new build campus or something like that you know as as other universities have done you've got an opportunity to really kind of say right ground up what are we going to do here and if you're doing that you know within the last sort of two three years you've you've definitely got an opportunity 
Yeah. When, when you're retrofitting it into existing spaces, you know, we're not ripping an entire campus to bits and, and redoing it. So um, I've, got, I've got ideas, I've got some some concepts and I was chatting with our rep from Extron about them just recently. Um, we've got to have some really nice kit coming out. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I went out to, to see them at ISE, um, flew it on the Monday and then went to see them because they were doing their demo of the new NAB stuff. You brought up a great topic there and I forgot to ask that question. ISE, uh, I'm guessing you attend a lot of ISEs. I, t- I try to. I try to go every year, yeah. Uh, have, you, have, yeah. have you attended Infocom? I've never been to Infocom. Nope. I would like I, to go one day. But. Yeah, one of these days as well with myself, you know. so But like, do you find that when people find out that you're just working in a higher ed capacity, they treat you different to the private sector? I, I don't. I don't know because I mean I've I've been in I guess higher ed or you know specialist postgraduate education for you know fourteen years. Um, I was never at IAC or anything like that as a as a technician for Nor- when I was with Northern Light um, right. up to two thousand five. So I don't really have the kind of the, the context there. Um, so I, I I honestly I don't know. Um, they, I think they they do. I think the the relationships that we in higher education can have with the manufacturers is really really important, um, and it, it's interesting to see how the company different companies vary, and how they engage with the, you know they, they classify us as end user, but I'm kind of I don't feel myself as an end user. I this is it. They, like, like, I've, my end users, you know? I've been at ISE where that, that that like so describe your role, and I'm like, well, I'm not an integrator, but I'm not an end user either. I'm looking after like. The jack of all. Yeah, it's, I'm an in-house consultant almost, you know, something like that, you know. That's Precisely, yeah, kind yeah. Of, kind of what they are. Yeah, audiovisual consultants, yeah, for the actual school between the, yeah. all the stakeholders that's in there, you know. Um, if you were, finally, Ben, and thanks for all this, but if you were to, someone was to say that they wanted to enter the world of audiovisual, where would you direct them? <sighs> Oof, good one. I'd, I'd say go to an integrator. As I say, that that was that my my upbringing into the industry was was in a good size integrator, and I think the opportunity for for you to see lots of different aspects of the industry um, from a technology perspective uh, is is a is a pretty good chance. And you know, to to deal, you know, you'll be dealing with clients and that kind of thing. You know, so you get that relationship building and stuff with different clients, and you know, return custom and stuff like that. Um, I think I mean it, it. I think it stood me in fairly good stead. So I would I would suggest that's not a bad shout for someone else. That said, I am recruiting into my team just now. So if anyone fancies a, uh, a, 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 a learning space technician post, then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I was looking at that going August. Do you want to go out to Edinburgh? You know, because it's been absolute. Do you know what? It's been absolute years since I've been in, in Edinburgh. I think I was about twelve years of age when I was in Edinburgh. That's going back a, over. 25 years ago, you know, uh, do you know what? I was actually in Edinburgh for the opening of Scottish Parliament. That shows how long ago I was. Well, oh, 1999 or so. Yeah, uh, something like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Long time ago. Long time ago. You, you, you're due another visit then, I would say. I, uh, you just have to host an LTSMG. Okay? <laughs> I've thought about it. Once Once I've got some spaces that I'm kind of proud of and I can really show off, then... Uh... Yeah. You, you don't need to show off spaces, you just need to throw a good party around right? Edinburgh. Well, I've kind of thought, you know, we've got mm, Royal Yacht Britannia or the, you know, Edinburgh Castle. We've got some pretty awesome places that we could, uh, could, I could show you. <laughs> That's all from the All Things Techie podcast, episode 16. If you'd like to get in contact with the program, you can do so by visiting our website, www.allthingstech.ie. From me, Justin Dawson, thanks for viewing. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you very soon. The All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E, media.ie.